Right, well, hello, welcome to probably the final video from this particular server. It depends what the Caves and Cliffs Part 2 is going to do. Now, this was a base that we've shown on here before. It's called Bayside, the Bayside Villa. Um, we're going to leave there, mostly because after the Caves and Cliffs Update Part 1, I needed to develop new chunks to actually get the updates um, within the new chunks. So, or at least the updated styles of biomes. To find that, or to find a new area, generate a definite new area, I headed down into the nether and built a railway. So, first off, I'd gone down to about level 15. I'm going to have to see what level this is. Um, this was uh, trying to find ancient debris but eventually I created a railway and this is going to take us all the way through it's a long railway excuse me this is going to take us all the way through to new lands so originally I'd travelled however many blocks underneath knowing that each one under here is is it four or eight eight over the top I can't remember and we're, we're going to head off to the new lands. The railway automatically stops here. This is to a place where we were going to try and kill the weather. That depends. It might still happen. It just depends on Caves and Cliffs Part 2, which comes out soon. It caves might ruin the, the, the whole... Uh, Right, another fort tree, not a fortress. I don't know why I wrote that. Anyway, Caves and Cliffs Part 2 might ruin um, or make this entire world unplayable, so, so might have to start again. So I'm quite impressed with the new base. I'm going to talk you through a few bits there. And what I want you to try and understand is initially I just came out above the water 20 blocks or so above the water once I created this nether portal down the end of this particular tunnel so I tried to create a little bit of a space and have a bed but this was and actually still is to a certain extent in the middle of a large sea. Now, what we're also going to do now is not going to take that cart apparently. We'll go overland um, and what we're gonna we're gonna go to the sort of island base that I had first. So once the nether portal opened up in the overworld I found a mountain over there and I built a small cabin up there. But we're not going to go there either. We're going to go up this tower here. So the, the small cabin, and what are we going to do? Have a sort of aerial view of the new lands from up here. Okay, so the nether portal originally came out about there. All of this was just plain sea. That island right in front of us is fake. Uh, most of this island here is fake. We've got another, um, a mob spawner over there. Down here, this little cabin was the first thing I built on top of an island. And then all of this farm area here has been built in between two small islands. And... and that's it really that um most of the wooded area over here all of these trees uh, are mine and have been farmed quite extensively so we're going to head down and head to the cabin the whole point of moving out here again was to generate the landscapes that we have for or the new new biomes in caves and cliffs part 1 
So this cabin uh, was built as a small home and initially it was a storage area. Um, so plenty of storage around here. It's not so much now. Um, I've got a new storage place which we'll look at in the daytime. So I built the cabin and I built a small farm area on top which I now very rarely come up here to see what's going on. One of the first things they do in a new area as soon as I can is build a kelp farm. This kelp farm is a redesigned kelp farm, something's gone wrong there, not really sure what that is. But the point of the kelp farm is that if you use it with a smoker, yep the kelp's running, use it with a smoker you can normally get mega levels. Um, the smoker stores up all the lego levels from burning the kelp or smoking the kelp. I'll fix that later on. I think the first thing I built once we once we came out this way was the mine. Entrance to the mine goes all the way down. Ooh, let's go get him. Um, that was essentially to get the new materials so the mine down here well, extends that way pretty far it extends that way pretty far um, I haven't really got anything going this way um, when Caves and Cliffs part 1 did come out then they'd actually under generated diamonds in new blocks so the mine goes much further than needed largely to get into a generation of a new chunk so that there's plenty of diamonds which we'll see so out of the cabin after the cabin i think the next thing was uh this area was a small meadow for a sheep uh, i've replaced that recently so reusing all of the things and eventually i created a storage area over here now this farm area is built in between two islands there's an island there and an island just there quite like the idea of an island this is now the storage area and there's plenty that are not there's that have nothing in them because basically I just got bored I think but it's nice to have a storage area and I've also got a cooking area with loads of coal And lots of expensive things. There's a gold block, but if we look in this one, this is where all the expensive stuff goes. Once you, the thing is, once once you can start farming and once you get an XP farm, you're pretty much sorted, I think. So, built the farm. I built a little bed up here because I quite fancied the idea of having an open bed. So this bed is sort of main storage, and that's a place where I put some of my decent tools if I decide to go off and do something silly. This little parkour area built by uh, one of the family. So I thought I'd build an island out to where the nether portal came out. So the nether portal came out over the sea over there. All of this is reclaimed. So all of this is now man-made island. It looks it. It doesn't look auto-generated. It's man-made island. Um, and we'll look under it shortly, but we've got a little bit of a lake. I think I had some axolotls in there, but I'm not sure they've survived. Um, plenty of treeage. Do like flowers. And so this island was built as a way of just constantly partly having flowers, trees, and also a nice overland route to get to this which is where the nether portal originally came out I also stole some villagers from a village over there and I put them on a small island over here and then I started to grow the island we'll look at that in a little while so nobody wants to keep walking around like this so I have a minecart railway and it goes from the storage area. So that there, that's my kelp farm. A 
this is a map I just put together. I don't know. And right, so we're going to take the mine cart from the farm and storage area over to the nether portal. So this was built after I'd made the island, and but the island is basically entirely hollow underneath. I did put a nice little port in, um, but don't often use it because it's just annoying having to get off the railway all the time. And as we come round here, we're going to see the understructure of the fake island that I built. Lots of vines and the orange things, hanging orange things. I can't remember what they're called. Actually, there's an interesting point down there. So now this is the main portal. If we pop down here, we can. I have built a ladder down to... Is it an amethyst geode, I think? There should be an amethyst geode here. Oh, look at that. That's grown nicely. Um, and this... Well, there was an opening. Well, there is an opening to, this, to the under the sea. So we can use this. And we can see under here this, the base structure of all of the islands. That's the bottom of the lake over here. So the base structure was built like this and the sides were built up over the top. So it's a bit blocky. Um, I did have oversea mine carts going to the various islands and also the mob spawner, but I changed that. Didn't particularly think it was aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I decided to change that and have underwater ones through glass tunnels which we're about to use now to go over to visit all of my islanders or slaves. They're slaves, aren't they? The villagers. You, you capture them and then you treat them and then you breed them and you treat them terribly. I think ethically it's a bit of a, a, bit of a dodgy game. Kidnap some villagers and then start breeding them. Uh, this is underneath my the fake part of my island that I grew. And I've got an underground base here. But if we go up to the top, we can see the whole top of the fake island and my villagers. I've started building a home for the villagers, but got a bit bored. Over here, I've got some farm animals, sheep, pigs, chickens, cows. Um, oh, how's the, let's go get some honey. I'm not entirely sure what to do with the honey yet. Well, it just depends on whether the Caves and Cliffs Part 2 update means uh, a complete reset or can still use this. We'll see. Some of the villagers have trapped if they've got good spells. So this one has... Is that mending? I've got a sign that says it. Fortune 3. There's another... There's another one over here. Silk Touch. It's quite handy to have. So all of these villages I've bred. Um, and then I have yet to finish the house. So we've got beds here for the villagers. And then also some more beds upstairs. Uh, we could, I guess we could do some trades if I get some uh, pumpkins and watermelons. So we'll just do that and then I'll show you the storage system. I think put them on an island originally that was well lit up. So there was a little, little distance away from the actual base. So unlikely to sleep here. Um, but now they have iron golems and things to protect them. I think they do. One of them was drowned under the sea. It must have fallen off the island and gone somewhere. Right. I mean, we've got 15, 16 of those, 17, 18, I think that'll do. I'm just going to replant, because you should, shouldn't you? And people are going to moan at me at having another right hoe, I don't care. And we'll just get some watermelons out as well. I guess they could go there. Uh, 
over here. Uh, sugar cane is that and then you can see if we just come down here you can see I decided to fill in the whole sides of the island um, with mostly sand uh, just to sort of protect it so the island was a small hill I chopped that down to sea level dropped all of this sand all the way around it I don't know I just did um, and at the same time landscaped at the top a little bit trees I do like plants I think they make the place look nice I'll just go to bed here as it's bedtime okay Uh, let's find a farmer, preferably one I've traded with already. Oh, I've not traded with him. What about this one? No. I do. F I do find it quite interesting. One, you get to a particular point where emeralds are easy. And farming is easy. Um, so what I do have down here, if we pop back down to the uh, underground area with, with the bed, is a storage system. You can put stuff in the chest up the top, and it all ends up coming back. Mm, take that. All ends up coming back down here. So in here, I tend to keep things that I can trade for emeralds. And I don't know. I don't know. Right. Let's pop over to the mob spawner. We can take a minecart. Is there a minecart over there? No. Let's do that. We'll take the minecart and we'll swim back. So I think the ultimate aim of this eventually was to try we haven't been to the end but was to try and get a beacon and that that might still happen trying to get a beacon uh, again depends what the caves and cliffs update does there, there we are underneath the island here we can see just about the sides of the island and we're heading underneath the fake islands so I th that over there might be called New Holland I think I decided all uh, right, so let's go to the mob spawner. And this railway we eventually head down into, again, under the sea. And we're going to pop up at the mob spawner. I did enjoy making the mob spawner. Uh, sorts of things we've been getting uh, have a look in here right oh, that's annoying isn't it uh, so we can we, actually we're getting quite a nice view of everything if we go up to the top Here we are, top of the mob spawner. Can you fish from this height now? I'm... No. Oh. I think. Mm, whatever. Okay, I've got some weird sounds in my ears. I don't know what that is. Let's not worry about that. Right. Just over there, there's the, there, there's the island with the villages. You can see how homemade it is now. 
just in the distance there is where I stole the villagers from, or a couple anyway. Down here you can see my artificial island. And then over here is the main part of the base with the little diddy log cabin there. There's the back of the map that we looked at. Um, so, I think that might be about it. That's sort of a grand tour of this whole area. We cover the main things. Villager Island, Artificial Island, Cabin. And there has been quite a bit of exploring going on. There has been quite a bit that um, I haven't shown you. And the mines are extensive, but broadly speaking, quite boring, I feel. Because they just look like mines. So I think if we head back, the farm's coming on nicely. We've got a lot. There's a lot of stuff from the farm. Again, farming is one of those things. Once you start doing it well, it just seems you get a ridiculous amount of food. If we look in the food tray here, silly, silly amounts of food. Um, I might go and trade those in a little bit once I've stopped recording this. There we are. I'm going to head back up to what I... I, I suppose I consider it to be my f favourite bed. Well, there we are. We've got the main parts of this region in this world. I've walked through them and talked through them. So until next time, depending on what Caves and Cliffs 2 brings us, I shall leave you.